We're gonna do something decent. We're gonna do some horror jump scare reaction. And what the hell does happen here? Are you serious? Are you kidding me? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Oh my good god, what just happened? Why is everyone black? I'm not racist, but rather than just say, like, someone says they're white even black. I don't know, but Bandy came taking this much CPU usage? Jesus Christ, man. Okay, let's go to the reaction, see what happens. This, of course, this is the probably the most horrific and darkest YouTube channel you've never seen before. But I think whoever those viewers are, I think they said in some of it. So let's go and get into it, shall we? We're into the channel now, and what is going on? Yeah, so we're here now. Let's go and see what happens. Full sound and see. Yeah, just do it. If you're having a little trouble with the picture on the TV, it's just what we see on our screens. Police are in. Hold on a second. Or ATP. Investigating yes. a deadly shooting. A side that shows us just how twisted humanity can really be. A side reserved by YouTube's darkest channels. Okay. Before we begin, this video is sponsored Hold by on, Surfshark VPN. Anyone who has watched my channel knows that the internet is a dark place. So it's imperative Anyways. to be protected when using it. Which is what. Okay, let me skip the sponsors. Wear surfly on your and use the promo code NAN along It doesn't look like much. In fact, the footage you're watching seems nothing shy of normal. Okay. A family spending the day out getting to see Thomas the Tank. It was all smiles and all laughter. On screen, we see the youngest member of the family, Ainsley Stapleton, Hold on, give me and a her older brother, McEwen. It. Behind the camera was their father, Matt. And here, here we see Kelly Stapleton and her daughter Isabel, or Izzy for short. The video highlighted the family of five having one of their many fun hey, days guys, out um, of the house, that, um, with the video being posted to YouTube under the title. Anyway guys, I'm um, sorry for that, uh, my brother was shouting a lot, so let's see. Stapleton's day out with Thomas. Wait, wait, it's from 2008, May 12th? Wow, um, funny thing, only 8,000 views. <laughs> this clip went live all the way back in May of 2008, and would be the first of many videos posted to Kelly Stapleton's YouTube channel. Mm, and for okay. the first two years of this channel's existence, many videos followed the same mold, crudely edited clips showing the Stapleton family's wholesome moments. It's clear from these videos that the Stapleton family was a unit, even at times performing songs as a group together. Okay. And in many ways, they all seemed like the perfect family. Okay. And it's likely that no one could have guessed the disturbing future that they were headed for. As 2010 came around, before the channel appeared to be dropped for good, in the description, Kelly writes, Mom and autistic daughter finally danced together. This dance project was years in the making. The video shows the heartwarming moments of Kelly and Izzy dancing together on stage. This also served as the first confirmation throughout the channel that okay. the Stapleton's daughter, Izzy, had autism. A fact that will Aww. prove crucial as the story continues. With that upload, Kelly Stapleton's channel fell dormant, and the small channel filled with precious family memories faded into oblivion. However, this wouldn't end up being the last time Kelly would post on YouTube, as after a three year long break, the family would come back with a new string of videos. Videos that were a far cry from the wholesome content they had previously posted. On February 5th, 2013, Kelly would upload a 28 second long clip entitled Typical Day. And fair warning, it's disturbing. Yes guys, it's very disturbing. Do not watch this. Do not watch this one. 
This is gonna scare the shit out of me, of course. During night time. Let's see. Nope. I'm able to shit my pants. I'm able to shit my pants right now. No, no, I don't want to, man. I don't want to. Nope. This video came as an absolute shock compared to the channel's previous content, as it seemed to show some kind of very real physical altercation. With Kelly clarifying in the description what was supposedly happening here. Kelly writes, My autistic daughter is aggressive. She was agitated and pulled my hair, then hit me several times. I was in the process of calling my husband for help, when I must have hit the record button. This video is what happened next. And though this video shows us a glimpse at how bad things had gotten, it was Kelly's is only getting at her residential facility. Oh my good god, man. Izzy's fault. She was a victim of her own mind, and she needed better treatment. Oh, hold on. Well, you said to me she's gonna kill you. She will. You feel that way? Yes. It's a very sad and twisted situation. A mom afraid of her own daughter. Aww. And it's made worse by the fact that this wasn't really Izzy's fault. Yeah. She was a victim of her own mind. Yeah, and that's she true. needed better treatment. Yeah, yeah. That is also true, bro. Like, she needed. She deserved it, you know? Need with her violent outburst. Until it was too, lurt, too late, I think. During Izzy's time at home, Kelly would make two more videos with her. With the final being titled Nightly Prayers, a video that featured no description and no comments. Father, son, holy channel. And in the past seven years, there has been no activity from the account, effectively marking the end of the Kelly family. And why did Kelly stop posting to her blog and to her channel? Well, surprisingly, it was all thanks to a camping trip. No. Izzy agreed, as Kelly had promised she could have as many s'mores as she wanted, oh, which happened to be her favorite snack. So they drove out to a rural spot in Kenzie County, Michigan, and parked their van. There they sat by the fire, as Izzy made s'more after s'more, something that I imagine must have made her incredibly happy. After some time, Izzy had got back in the van and sat in the front seat as her mom packed up their equipment in the back. In the trunk of the vehicle were two charcoal stoves that Kelly had brought for their night, so she grabbed them both and set them up in the back seat. She filled them with charcoal and one by one lit them up. Kelly got back in the vehicle and sat in the driver's seat next to Izzy, and as the smoke began to fill the car, she rolled up the windows no. and locked the doors. Oh my god. Izzy likely had no idea that this was never planned to be a night of camping. It was a planned murder-suicide. A plan hatched by her own mother. It seems that Kelly believed her daughter could no longer be helped, and she was tired of caring for her. And her plan was for the carbon monoxide to kill them both in the van, so that neither of them had to deal with this anymore. And so they sat there and they waited as the poisonous gas slowly pushed them closer and closer to death. Kelly would send one final text to Matt before the two drifted off. When the word is over. On receiving the first, but Izzy wasn't so lucky. The fumes had made her fall into a coma, but luckily after three long days, she became responsive suffering only minor long-term brain injuries. Today, Kelly is still serving time in prison, and Izzy has continued receiving treatment. And one of the most shocking parts of the aftermath to me was the public's response to Kelly. 
The comments on her videos are filled with overwhelming support for those who agreed with her decision to try and kill her own daughter. With one user saying, I agree 100%, I would put that animal up, and you did absolutely everything possible. You should be proud of all you tried to do for Izzy and all you accomplished. I for one support you and understand why you did what you did. It's all very disturbing, and though the family was in a tough spot, they could have turned to foster care, group homes, new medication, or even just a new treatment plan. As in the time following the event, the family has been highly criticized for using a treatment plan that is known to cause agitation and anger. There was a lot more that could have been done. Oof, that there's more. The yeah, Russian crazy. pop singer Zilium Bekev, mm. born in Chechnya, Bekev grew up with a passion for singing, and those around him man, knew. Man, Chechnya looks amazing. Whoa. Anyway, that was just mistaken they did that. Let's go. That he had the voice to make it big. And by man, I like that man. That was the best Russian music. I've never heard that. It's like a, that's the Russian remix, man. <laughs> 2017, he had already managed to make quite a name for himself in the Russian music scene, scoring a number of hit songs. And all this was accomplished at the age of just 25, making it clear that he had an incredibly promising future ahead. A future that would take a sudden and mysterious detour in August of that year. On the 6th of August, Bekev had flown into Grozny to attend his sister's wedding. The special moment was a break in the never-ending grind to make it as a famous singer. But despite the time off, he would soon have to leave for Moscow to attend a talent competition. He would never make it there. Because on the 8th of August, Bekev went out to explore Grozny after the wedding and never came back. With his phone being shut off and all of his social media accounts being deactivated. Bekev was at the peak of his career. He was living the life he had always dreamed of. And he just disappeared without a trace or an explanation. Did he run away and start a new life? Or was he taken? Nobody knew as the case became a widespread mystery throughout the region. And it wouldn't go without answers for long as a break would quickly come in the form of two eyewitnesses who had claimed to have seen exactly what happened to Bekev. On the evening of August 8th, 2017, well, two bystanders something. had witnessed the singer acting in a calm and casual manner. As the bystanders watched, they would witness Bekev as he was approached by SOBR security forces, Jesus a rapid Christ. reaction military group a group that typically handles terrorist threats and other major cases like that. The witnesses claim that after being confronted by the group, Bekev was then placed in handcuffs, put in the vehicle, and driven off, never to be seen again. A seemingly normal looking singer being detained by a military group, it just didn't make any sense. What kind of risk could this young man have posed? And even more strangely, in the days following the alleged arrest, the Chechen government denied these reports and stated that Bekev had not actually been arrested. All this despite the fact that the eyewitnesses were proven to be credible. So what's with the secrecy? And where yeah. did Bekev end up? Yeah, yeah. Well, as it turns out, the young pop singer may have found himself in a concentration camp. Jesus Christ, man, concentration camp? Well, that's insane, bro. That is terrifying, you know? It's a shocking idea, and without context, it certainly sounds crazy. Yeah. But it might actually make sense. At the time of his disappearance, it was said that a shockingly high number of gay men had mysteriously vanished from the region with many of their whereabouts still being unknown. Because of this, there were rumors floating around Chechnya 
that gay men in the country were being secretly abducted and held at concentration camps in the area. Camps where the victims would be tortured in an attempt to either kill them or turn them straight. And as strange as this all sounds, it's actually <sighs> true. Oh, we no. turn now to a story causing global outrage out of the Russian Republic of Chechnya. A coordinated government campaign to round up and eliminate gay men. He says he was detained for more than a week, then starved and brutally tortured. It's said that there are frequent purges in the area to rid Chechnya of homosexuality, where victims are abducted by government-led groups and brought to these camps. Those who are sent there are not only tortured, but oftentimes forced into home to their families, which should be a good thing. Yeah. Well, apparently not, as they oh, are only sent home no. on Every time I see that shovel, you guys guessed it. Every time I see that shovel, oh my god. The condition that their own families kill them. It's a disturbing and twisted thing that is likely happening right now as we speak, with practically no news coverage here in the U.S. And truthfully, this whole situation would warrant its own video, so I won't go that far into detail. Yeah. But nonetheless, these purges are really happening. And as you might have guessed, Bekev was openly gay himself, and he had found himself in Chechnya during the peak of one of these purges. He was also extremely recognizable given his star status, making him an easy target for the military group to abduct. With many assuming this to be the reason for Bekev's disappearance, it seemed likely that he was killed in one of these camps, as it's said that many people who go there don't make it out. Now, though this story is incredibly dark, you may be wondering, what does this have to do with YouTube? as after all, the singer didn't even have his own channel. Well, this would all change on September 24th of 2017, when Bekev would show the world that he wasn't actually missing, and that he apparently wasn't trapped in an anti-gay concentration camp either. On that day, Bekev would upload a video to a brand new YouTube channel, supposedly showing that he was doing well, and that he was now living in Germany. Okay, so I think he's all right, I think. Good he explains how he gave up his life as a singer and had taken up a simpler, more stress-free life. The channel itself consists of just two uploads, both coming on the same day and showing the now former singer dancing and laughing and just appearing to have a good time. He was great news. He seems happy, and yeah. it proves that he was alive, yeah, and not actually in danger. And at least the clips would provide some closure for his family, and stop the spread of this rumor. However, as I mentioned previously, it's easy to hide behind a screen, and make everything seem perfect. But there's always those who can see right through it. Immediately upon the video's release, loved ones of Bekev claimed that he had been acting completely out of character in these videos. In many instances, his speech and his movements feel strained. <laughs> and there are quite a few examples of seemingly fake laughter. <laughs> and by the second video, he even starts dancing, but you can tell that he seems to be slightly uncomfortable by doing so. Also, there are moments where Bekev is clearly reading off of a script, an idea that could explain his strange behavior. The way Bekev was acting was suspicious, and it wasn't just his behavior, it was also what he was saying. At one point, he says something that translates to, It's kind of the middle of August. I go to Germany. Everything is in our hands. But in actuality, the video was posted at the end of September, 
a long ways off from kind of the middle of August. Another indication that this was a scripted video that had potentially been recorded over a month ago. But even if it was scripted and recorded earlier, it still shows us that Bekev is safe, right? I mean, he's in Germany after all, far away from the persecution of the Chechen government. Well, analyzing the room further, this point might not actually be true. Just looking at the room, many have noticed that its features are not consistent to a home in Germany. The ceiling, air conditioning vents, wallpaper, and lighting design all don't seem to line up. As from a design perspective, you would be hard pressed to find any interior like it in Germany, as it's typically never seen in European homes. And rather, this interior design most closely resembles a home from Chechnya. Along with this, both the chair and the couch shown in the footage are Russian made. So between the bad acting and the seemingly off location, it's clear that something suspicious is going on here. A notion that may actually have been confirmed by an energy drink. In the clips, we see a bunch of drinks out on the table of where Bekev is sitting, right. with one of them being a bottle of Drive M7 energy drink. Now this is significant given the fact that this beverage isn't even sold in the German market. However, it's a common staple in Chechnya, a fact that would later be fake. Now making things even more suspicious, this video came out just 10 days after Bekev's mother had publicly called out the Chechen president about her son's disappearance, an event that caused a minor media frenzy. With all this said, it seems highly likely that Bekev was forced into making these videos by Chechen authorities in order to calm the public's suspicion. And there's a disturbing note to consider if this is true. Remember when Bekev said it's kind of the middle of August, despite the video being posted in late September? Well, maybe the video actually was filmed all the way back in mid-August, and authorities were holding on to it to release if suspicions ever got high. Which, as we know, at the time the videos were released, Bekev's own mother was calling out the government and getting all the media involved. So by the time these videos were posted, there was a very likely chance that they were already a month old. Which means that throughout that time, Bekev was likely being beaten and tortured at a concentration camp where people supposedly didn't last very long. So when this channel was started and these two videos were released, it seems highly likely that Zillian Bekev was already dead. It's clear that YouTube can be quite a disturbing platform at times, with many of its darkest channels hiding behind masks, and I can only imagine how many more there are out there, hiding in plain sight. Just Thanks for watching the video, stay tuned, I hope you like it. Thanks for watching the video because I was kind of bored today yesterday. So um yeah, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for the reaction and bye-bye.